Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a janky combo deck titled Mission Impossible, whose goal it is to weaponize 9 lives and turn it into a win condition. 9 lives, a 3 mana enchantment with hexproof, saying if a source would deal damage to you, prevent the damage and put an incarnation counter on 9 lives, and when there are 9 or more incarnation counters on it, exile 9 lives, and when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. So, in true spy movie fashion, we're gonna try to give our copy of 9 lives to the opponent and then eventually get rid of it using a Cyclone Summoner, a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven giant wizard, that when it enters the battlefield, if we cast it from our hand, return all permanents to their owner's hand except for giants, wizards and lands. So that's gonna bounce the copy of 9 lives, and of course because it leaves the battlefield, the opponent will lose the game. So how are we planning to give the opponent our copy of 9 lives? Well, that's where the Trickster God's Heist comes in handy. On the second chapter, we may exchange control of two target non-basic, non-creature permanents that share a card type. So if the opponent controls an enchantment, we can exchange control of the opponent's enchantment with our 9 lives, and then the opponent will now control our 9 lives, and the bomb has been planted for us to eventually make it explode with our Cyclone Summoner, which will hit the trigger. Now what if the opponent doesn't control any enchantments or doesn't play any enchantments in their deck? Well, that's where one with the stars comes in handy, a 4 mana enchantment aura that enchants a creature or enchantment, and the enchanted permanent is an enchantment and loses all other card types. So we can enchant an opposing creature with our one with the stars and now all of a sudden the opponent will control an enchantment that we can exchange control with using our nine lives and the trickster god's heist. So step one is to get a nine lives in play which can also buy us additional time by preventing damage. Step two is to make sure the opponent controls an enchantment potentially using a one with the stars. Step three is to exchange control with the trickster god's heist and step four is to win the game with our cyclone summoner. Now we could also replace cyclone summoner with Ugin the spirit dragon who's minus three ability can wipe the board including nine lives which can also win us the game but that's not nearly as cool as winning the game with a cyclone summoner so let's take a look at the rest of the deck starting out with our two drops where we can potentially foretell doomscar to then cast it for three mana later giving us a nice sweeper destroying all creatures our deck does need a lot of sweepers to stay alive long enough to pull off all these shenanigans we also have the full playset of Omen of the Sea, which lets us draw cards and scry, so we can assemble the right combo pieces. And the Birth can also help us hit our land drops by searching up planes, and on the second chapter makes an 0-4 wall token that we can potentially exchange with the opponent using the first chapter of the Trickster God's Heist to steal an opposing creature, so there's some cool synergy there too. And the wall token can also force the opponent to overextend so they can start damaging us, which runs right into our 8 sweeper effects with our 4 copies of Doomscar and 4 copies of shattered the sky then we've got some additional tutor effects with idyllic tutor which lets us search for any enchantment and put it into our hand so this can find additional card draw with omen of the sea if we're just missing cyclone summoner but it can also search up all the missing combo pieces between our nine lives trickster gods heist and one with the stars which is why we only have three of each whereas we have the full playset of cyclone summoner which is a bit more unique and difficult to find in the deck then of course we've got our four copies of nine lives now if you do have multiple copies of nine lives the game will automatically make sure that that it puts counters on the nine lives with the least amount of counters so you don't need to manually do the replacement effects although you do have the option to do that and if you control a nine lives and the opponent controls a nine lives at the same time then if you cast cyclone summoner given that the active players triggers go on the stack first the non-active players triggers will resolve first meaning that the lose the game trigger from nine lives will resolve first for the opponent so if you both control nine lives and cast cyclone summoner you still win the game so that also works out nicely and then we also have two copies of thirst for meaning as an additional card draw effect we get to draw three and then discard two cards unless we discard an enchantment card so if we happen to draw multiple copies of nine lives one with the stars or heist that we don't need we can easily discard those to our thirst instead and then four copies of shatter the sky to complement doomscar as another sweeper to make sure we can stay alive long enough and our three copies of one with the stars of course we can also just use as a removal spell in the meantime although do keep in mind it doesn't get rid of any utility that that creature might provide since it's still gonna stay in play just as an enchantment instead of a creature so it won't be able to attack or block and three copies of heist which also has some nice utility with our birth and on the final chapter also gains some additional life which can be useful to stay alive one extra turn 
and then finally your four copies of Cyclone Summoner. And then going over the mana base, four copies of Fabled Passage alongside one Swamp, two Islands and five Planes. We do need a lot of Planes for Birth. And then all 12 Pathways in the Esper Colors. So that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice looking hand. Two of our combo pieces in hand already. Omen to find the missing ones or potentially draws into a Sweeper if we need it. And we've got good mana. Fetch up an island, so we have double blue for Cyclone Summoner eventually. And it's easy to find more planes between having more planes and birth searching them up. Alright, another heists. Opponent with a turn one planes. And now a Temple of Silence, so black-white. And yeah, Cyclone Summoner and Birth are both good here. So, can draw one for turn and one with Omen, so we eventually draw both. Keep hitting our land drops. Can wait on playing nine lives for now. Replicating ring, so we need our opponent to eventually control an enchantment, which we can do with one with the stars if they present a creature, or hopefully they play their own enchantment, which would make things easier. So we could play nine lives, or we could sacrifice omen here. I guess we'll play nine lives since the upside is pretty high if our opponent does run out an enchantment by themselves. All right, Elspeth's Nightmare. Perfect. It's gonna kill our wall. But now Heist can swap control. Opponent does get to see my hand, but they won't be able to take away Cyclone Summoner. And we'll grab that Nightmare before it goes away. And then we're just one land drop away from winning. Doom Foretold. Alright. And Maze Mind Tome. So Doom Foretold shouldn't be too much of a problem here with all our sagas. So we'll sacrifice Omen. Exchange control of... I guess just Doom Foretold and Nine Lives instead of Nightmare. And then the opponent won't be able to sacrifice the nine lives to Doom Foretold, otherwise they lose the game. Alright, let's see what happens. Opponent's gonna go digging. If they find a discard spell, they can maybe survive here. Another Doom Foretold, that's fine. Alright, looks like we're gonna make it here. Sacrifice both copies of Birth. Gain some more life. And Cyclone Summoner for the win. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Probably fetch up an island right away. Turn two. Might birth first before we omen, just to give ourselves more time to draw into some of our missing combo pieces. Opponent on a discard deck with Liliana Steward. So I can probably discard the planes we search up here. And 
disciple. And steward. Another planes can go. Right, thirst for meaning is a nice one. So, probably gonna cast that one end of turn. And then. Hopefully, the opponent runs out an enchantment at some point so we can heist with nine lives. One with the stars also could work. So I could just one with the stars right now. Or we could wait. Since there might be more threatening creatures that show up. And then for now we can omen. Yeah, that's probably fine. Alright, there's Rankle. And then in response to the trigger we'll cast Omen, so we have more information on what to potentially discard. Alright, Doomscar, Birth. Don't really need either of those, since we can just one with the star's Rankle. So we're just digging for Cyclone Summoner and... Nine lives. Alright, Tudor can find nine lives, so probably get rid of a land. Keep the double blue for summoner. And then we'll one with the stars. Rankle. Now, if they play a second rankle, I think they will sacrifice the enchantment one, since it still counts as a legendary. Rankle Master Pranks, but I'm not 100% sure here. Well, we're about to find out. Yep, so our enchantment's gone now. Which means we'll need to find another one with the stars, unfortunately. Which we can do with... Angelic Shooter. So they're making things complicated. But at least that gives us a bit of a challenge. Alright, opponent's still making us discard. I guess that's helpful. Picked up Omen. Could also just exchange control with Rankle for now. So we don't have to deal with them. Since we have a second heist. So we're not going to be able to... get uh, nine lives in play before the second chapter happens, but that's fine. Demonic Gifts on Rankle, so they're gonna kill it here. Soul Shatter, alright, it's a creative way to get the Rankle back. So each player draws. Alright, there's nine lives, so I think I keep both, because that way I get to tutor for my uh, one with the stars, enchant rankle, hopefully they don't play a third one, and then I can nine lives plus heist in the same turn. And we can discard Thirst for Meaning. And then we're just missing Cyclone Summoner. And Nightmare Shepherd. Alright. Shatter the Sky. Probably not necessary here. Alright, hopefully they don't play another Rankle here. Or 
another disciple can have my shatter. Alright, so make sure to click on Rankle and Nightlifes. Our opponent now controls nine lives. And then could shooter for Omen. Play Omen, still play Thirsts. Could just Thirst right now, and then maybe draw into a Sweep or two. Although then we'll have to discard a bunch to the Disciples coming back. Yeah, I'll shoot her for Omen here. But then I'll probably play Thirsts. Also have Omens we can sacrifice, so got a few options. So I'll take six. We're about to gain three with Heist as well. Steward's fine. And Avenger, okay. So both Omen and Thirst dig equally deep into our library here, seeing three new cards, so we'll use a more expensive one. Right, no Summoner. Birth can go. And there we go, right on time. Our opponent is putting two and two together here. And another successful heist. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play with what looks like a nice hand. A redundant nine lives can be discarded to thirst for meaning. Ideally, our opponent presents an enchantment. If not, we'll need to dig for one with the stars. Falmar Knights. Could be some sort of Death Touch tribal deck. In which case, we'll need to dig for our sweeper effects. Black Green and Moss Viper. Plus another Falmar Knight. So we could thirst, we could drop nine lives, although we can maybe wait on that. Yeah, thirst seems like the best option for now. And then we do need black eventually. Tudor can also find one with the stars. Since our opponent's unlikely to have many enchantments in their deck. Alright, birth can buy us some time too. So don't mind double birth. Now the wall tokens don't line up incredibly well against Death Touch creatures, but if our opponent runs out like a Finn the Fangbearer, we can exchange control of heists with the wall and the creature. So we get two walls. Now might be a good time to run out nine lives, or we can shoot her for one with the stars. I think we'll shoot her for one with the stars. And then we're just missing Cyclone Summoner. Opponent might be playing around a Sweeper here by not overextending. Or they might be holding some removal spells that they don't want to use. Alright, well, let's try this. That works. Take two. Yeah, not sure what our opponent's holding here. So 
So I can go 9 lives plus heist. Might as well make use of the first chapter. And then we're just one Cyclone Summoner away from winning. If we find another Idyllic Tutor, we can search up Omen, which can help us dig towards the Giant. All right, Blizzard Brawl takes out the wall. So they did indeed have some removal spells in hand. One counter on nine lives. Nighthawk Scavenger joins the fun. And there's Omen. So time to exchange control. Then we gotta make sure to click on Falmar Knight instead of one with the stars here. And then we'll just swipe the board here. Another scavenger. We'll fetch before playing Omen so we don't mess with the order of our library. So they had a Call of the Death Dweller in hand, which makes sense. So either another Sweeper or Cyclone Summoner would be nice. We'll take Shatter. And end of turn we can sacrifice Omen to Scry. Now we did shuffle our deck a few times, so... Just have 35 cards for Cyclone Summoners to draw towards. Varagoth, alright. Can search up any card in the opponent's deck once it gets to boast. So nice addition for the Death Touch deck. And another Call of the Death Dweller gets back Nighthawk Scavenger. So that explains why the opponent wasn't doing much in the early game. Another 9 lives does buy us a lot of time. So might be worth keeping. It's not as good as just winning the game. I think it's still worth keeping here. And then I'll keep my two lands in hand, I think, in case we find Thirst for Meaning. That way we can discard two lands. Probably fine to chump. And if we both control 9 lives, we still win the game if we play Cyclone Seminar, so that's not a concern. Faragoth gonna search for the perfect card here. Doomscar, pretty good. And we still have enough mana to cast Thirst for Meaning and play Cyclone Summoner afterwards. Mar Triton mills a copy of Finn the Fangbear and another Nighthawk Scavenger. All right, put us almost out of action now, one card in hand. And there's Thirst for Meaning, make sure we have double blue. And there's Cyclone Summoner. So that should do it. Both nine lives triggers on the stack, but the opposing trigger resolves first. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with an acceptable hand. Double Doom's card to buy ourselves some time early. Nine lives can also buy time, and then Tudor can find maybe a heist. Do need a second white source eventually, but there's plenty of those in the deck. All 
All right, there we go. Mystic Sanctuary could point towards a mono blue mill deck, which is probably not going to be a great matchup for us. As our opponent mills us with Secret Keeper. Not only can the opponent get rid of our combo pieces before we draw into them, but they also tend to mill us before we get to the late game. So, I think I still play 9 lives instead of tutoring for anything. Opponent also doesn't attack our life total, so 9 lives as a defensive measure doesn't do a whole lot. On the bright side, they do tend to have some enchantments in the deck with the Ferris Tutelage, so we can potentially skip the one with the stars step and fetch up our heist right away. Still have three Cyclone Summoners left in the deck. Make that two, and two heists. So as much as I want a Doomscar just for Rune Crab, I think I need to get Heist before it's too late. And then next turn we can pay a full price to Doomscar. Another tutor can maybe get Omen. Opponent probably has four mana for Into the Story to draw four here. Uh, didn't say please, gonna counter it instead, that's fine. Counter spells are gonna be tough to beat, so getting those out of their hand is actually a good thing. Opponent's going to keep up mana again. Yeah, I think we got a tutor. Could also tutor for birth, and then I can exchange control of crab with um, the wall token eventually. That seems a little sketchy, since we still need the opponent to have an enchantment at some point too. One with the stars, a pretty terrible answer to Ruined Crab, since I still get the Landfall trigger. So I'm not sure if I need to count on them playing Teferi's Tutelage, or if I get to one with the stars anyway. And then we'll just enchant Secret Keeper. I think I'll just go with Omen. And then we'll end of turn Omen, as opposed to Doomscar. Opponent just does nothing here. So they might have more counter spells in hand. It's gonna fire off an into the story now to play around their own counter. It's a pretty high likelihood that they found the Ferris Tutelage. Land Omen. Guess we could keep both. Then, do I doom scars? Question. I can play Omen, sacrifice Omen as an alternative here. Hmm, I think they can keep one crab. They're probably going to play a second one in their turn. But then we can maybe fight over a counter spell with Doomscar and have Heist and Summoner eventually resolve. Right, so we still have a couple summoners left in the deck. Might have to keep one with the stars since I didn't play tutelage. Tutelage 
shooter. Not very helpful. So this is gonna bait out a counterspell. And then... I guess we'll one with the stars on Secret Keeper here, so that if we do find a sweeper we can actually kill the crabs. Only 17 cards remain. for six. Alright, two Cyclone Summoners left in 11 cards. So I'm not loving my chances. Thirst is not a bad one though. So this has to resolve and we need to be able to swap nine lives with one with the stars. And then Thirst needs to draw into Cyclone Summoner, and we somehow don't need to be decked here. Bone is gonna scry. Can't imagine too many sequences where we win here with our opponent having five cards in hand. Can't think of many cards they could have in hand that don't mess with our combo in some way, or that just don't outright kill us. Maybe if their interactions like unsummon, as opposed to a more general bounce spell, they won't be able to bounce the secret keeper, but a stern dismissal, that's pretty specific. Gonna bounce the heists. And there's a tutelage at long last. That should close out the game pretty quickly. Uh -huh, so tiny, I guess, another card that doesn't do much against us that they could have in hand. And now Fable Passage with double Rune Crab is gonna close out the game. All right, well, we did the best we could here, but uh, yeah, the mill matchup is pretty terrible since our interaction doesn't line up all that well and the opponent attacks us on a different axis. GG's. So at the end of the day our uh, Mission Impossible deck is not gonna win any tournaments anytime soon but it's definitely a lot of fun when it all works out and I couldn't resist making a video about it. So that's gonna do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also wanna thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.